Brethren, I want to greet you this morning in the name of the Lord. You've come here today to worship the King. He is, um, he's worthy, he's worthy of all praise. So it's not like you're going to give him more praise than he deserves today. He's worthy. David described our God with these words in Psalm 72, 18. Blessed be the Lord God, the God of Israel, who only doeth wondrous things. And blessed be his glorious name forever. And let the whole earth be filled with his glory. Amen and amen. amen, amen, amen. This is the God now that's redeemed you. He's bought you with a price. He's put you in the Christ. He's given you the gift of the Holy Spirit. He's enabled you to be able to stand in the time of trouble. This is the God amen. we've come to worship and to serve today. Amen. This is the God that's going to impute righteousness unto you, right? He's going to give you the ability to be able to to praise him with insightful praise. In other words, he's done something in you that you can identify. And so today as we gather together, let's be looking, let's be looking for the God, the God that we serve to do wondrous things. Isaiah 44, 6 says, Thus saith the Lord, the King of Israel, and his Redeemer, the Lord of hosts, I am the first and I am the last. And beside me, there is no God. So see, really, any other God that man is worshiping besides God is no God at all. It's just an imagination. It's something that they've created in order to satisfy this longing that God has put in everyone that's made in his image to be one with him. Amen. All right, so God's put this in man to seek after his creator, to seek after him. And God, God informs us there is no other. And who, as I, shall call and shall declare it. Now, this is a marvelous thing. It's a wondrous thing. All right? Only God can say, let there be light. And there be light. I mean, you've got to make this connection to what we're doing here today. Only God can command a blessing. He can say, bless them. And there's not anyone, any personality, in heaven or in earth or in under the earth, that can stop you from being blessed if God commands a blessing. Now, what we're asking him to do today, we're asking him to come, as he's promised, and join with us and command a blessing. I want to be blessed. Amen. And set in order for me, since I appointed the ancient people. Is there anybody else that can call us and say to Abraham, you're going to have a son. Abraham knows, Lord, I'm too old. And Sarah, she's... She's barren. She's always been barren. No one else but God can do this. Amen. Only an eternal God can have an eternal purpose. <laughs> I know it sounds kind of simple, doesn't it? <laughs> but see, people are kind of implying that they got all kinds of purposes, but your purpose can't last any longer than you. That's all it can last. I mean, if you live 80 years, all right, so you had a, you had a good string of days put one after the other, but there came a time. Because, see, we don't have life inside of us. Amen. We don't have life. We have, we have a borrowed life. Mm -hmm. And that life's going to give back, going to be given back to God someday. Now, you would expect that a great God would be accompanied by great works. Now, there's a lot of things out there that call themselves God, but the only problem is they're not doing anything. They can't. They don't have any power to do what they say, what they promise. They promise you if you put this cream on your face that you'll never look old. Well, it's just a lie. It's just a lie. It can't do it. doesn't have any power to do it. Amen. The man who made the stuff wasn't making it to make you look younger. He was making it to make himself rich. But God, God caused Sarah to conceive and bear a son when she was past age because she believed. Now, now this is, I just saw this is a new dimension in the power of God. God is mighty. He can speak a word and it can be done instantly. Yeah. But now look at what he's done. He's brought his people into his work on the basis of their believing. Amen. Oh, now God's going to have to be able to see inside of your heart in order for this, for this concept to even work. Okay, I'm going to bless you when you believe. Now I've got to be able to see and to know. Remember Abraham told him, go off of your son. Go off of your son. And and, and in Abraham's heart, he did. 
He actually sacrificed his son. But only God would know that because he didn't actually. You go to you read the account. He stopped him before. But now later on in Hebrews, it says that he received him. It says, from whence also he received him in a figure. So in Abraham's heart, he really did sacrifice his son. See, Abraham was thinking about this God that does wondrous things. Abraham was considering the fact, if I'm worshiping this God who can do anything, then he'll raise him from the dead. That's what Abraham says. That's what he reasoned it out in his own heart. So in his mind, Isaac was as good as dead. Now, my point is, is that we're serving a wondrous God, a God that can look inside of the heart of Abraham and know that. Only a great God could judge the hearts of men. Well, why do I say these things? Well, we've come together, we've gathered together to worship to fellowship one with another, to recite the, the things, the things that this God, this wondrous God does, yes. the things that he's done in us, the things that he did in Christ the day when he put away sin. We've come to recite these things and to, to remember these things. Why? Because it's in the remembrance of these things that God is glorified. Yes. See, it's when you say these things, when you, when you bring these things up, there's more personalities here than what you can see with the eye. They're here. They've gathered together too. Now, we want, to be, we want to bless God in the remembrance of his son, and we want to be blessed. We want to be enabled to be able to make it to the end of our race. The God of glory knows our hearts. He, he can see your intentions for why you showed up today. Well, that blessed me when I started thinking about that. God, God knows the intentions of your hearts. So today... We know that God's determined to bring many sons to glory. We know that only a great God can not only know how, what temptation you need. You say, well, wait a minute. God, God doesn't tempt anyone of evil, but see, God allows. God knows exactly what you need. What does a temptation do? What does a trial do? It weeds something out of you or brings something to you that you didn't have before the trial. So now, God's going to have to know your heart. God's going to have to be able to understand, which I'm speaking as a man. God knows all things. But God knows exactly what trial you need to go through. I've been thinking about this in relationship with Brother Tom. Uh, he's been going through some things. I don't know what he needs. God knows what he needs. See, God's with, with him through the whole trial. He knows right at that, right at that moment. He sees my, my servant. He's been believing. He's been trusting me. I'm going to make a way of escape. Well, only God knows when it's time. If it was up to me, I'd probably give it to him too soon. I probably would. I'd probably have sympathy. Wouldn't know the great thing that's going to be worked at him just two days from today. Uh -huh. yeah. See, God knows, and God, he makes, he makes the way of escape Amen. along with the, with the temptation. Amen. There's no temptation taking you but such as common to man. That's good to know too, isn't it? Yeah. It's, I'm not so unique. God's the unique one. God's the one. Yeah. We come to worship this great God so we can expect, today as we've gathered together, we can expect some wondrous things. And I can tell you, I, it, what God can see inside your heart. He knows, are, are you expecting to see God work today, to move today, to give you something that you need? He's going to answer that request. And he's going to do it in his way. I mean, it may, it may be someone standing up here talking about something that, and you just, God just blesses you with this. Opens, up, opens that up to your heart. Only God who is outside the realm of time can have power over it. So now he, he God's commanded, God's outside of we're, we're limited. We have six hours, maybe seven this morning to give to him. But see, God's outside the realm of time. God's, God can work in a way that doesn't require time. He can just work, give you something. Well, anyway, I won't linger too long on that. But this, this blessed me to consider this. I've come close to the Lord now as I've come close to his people. And I'm expecting God to do something, to work in me, to work in the brethren, such a thing that we'll stand back and say, only God can do this. It's a wondrous thing. Amen. Let's pray. Dear Heavenly Father, 
We ask this morning, that, Father, you would be with us, that you promised, that, Lord, that you would give us eyes and ears to be able to perceive your working in us and through us. We're asking today, Father, that you would do wondrous things, that, Father, that you would be with each one of your speakers, that, Father, they would speak as an oracle of you, Father, that you would speak through them. We ask, Father, today, Lord, that we would be able to glorify you, to praise you, and to share what you've given us in your son's name. Amen.